vault of the ICF. Thank you. Yeah, I believe that at Wilmer also, Scott Bauer does the same thing, goes for the white to white. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, be giving a talk about, uh, let me just time myself, I'm, I'm going to talk about case-based approach to the management of post-keratoplasty astigmatism, uh, and uh, hopefully this presentation will run nicely. Okay, so these are my financial disclosures. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, astigmatism after uh, keratoplasty is a big problem. Um, about 20% or up to 20% of our post-PK patients will have more than five biopters of astigmatism. And uh, the astigmatism leads to, to bad vision, to reduced contrast sensitivity because of the degree of the irregularity, because of the high, higher order aberrations, and also the forward and the uh, back scatter of the light can cause glare and photophobia. Overall, this is a reason for why a beautiful clear graft uh, would still not provide good vision. So there are many ways of uh, managing this uh, condition, starting first of all with the glasses and mo most importantly, contact lenses, which can really uh, help with uh, even the most severe cases of uh, post keratoplasty astigmatism. But uh, there are more um, invasive procedures, starting with something minimal, such as uh, suture management, uh, but going all the way uh, down to additional surgery, uh, such as uh, cataract surgery uh, with the uh, toric lenses, uh, wound revision, and finally repeat keratoplasty. Uh, so I'm going to be presenting some of my cases of uh, patients who developed astigmatism after uh, PKs or dulks, and we'll see what uh, I did with them. So uh, this is a case of a 48-year-old patient uh, with a contact lens-related corneal ulcer that, of course, grew multiple organisms, which all looked like uh, contamination, but did have uh, multiple repeat negative results from fungal and acanthamoeba cultures. Uh, this patient did not uh, respond to uh, fortified antibiotics, and uh, at some point we decided to do PAC-CXL. So we cross-linked him, and uh, immediately after cross-linking, the eye became very quiet, but uh, did develop this central corneal scar right over the, the visual axis. With a sclera lens, which this patient really did not like, uh, vision was 2040, and this patient uh, wanted us to go ahead and do surgery. And you can see in this uh, attempt at dulk how the uh, scar goes to the deeper layers of the cornea. Unfortunately, here we're getting uh, what looks like a type one, I'm, I'm sorry, type two bubble, uh, and we had to convert to a uh, PK. Uh, after we um, finished removing the sutures, uh, we found that this patient still had 15 diopters of uh, with a rule astigmatism, obviously very bad vision. Uh, in this case, I referred him to one of our optometrists who definitely came to the rescue with a contact lens. Again, this patient did not like sclera lenses, so uh, the optometrist here went for an intralimbal rigid gas permeable lens. And with that lens, vision was 2030, so much improved than the uh, uncorrected 2400 vision. This is another case, a patient with uh, advanced keratoconus, uh, and uh, here we did uh, groove and peel dulk. Uh, so we're doing the peripheral dissection here. And uh, after that, uh, after we finish the dissection, we're peeling off um, the uh, stroma, leaving very little stroma behind. And uh, this patient did pretty well. So one month, month post-op vision is uh, 2070 uncorrected. There is about 3.6 diopters of astigmatism at uh, 171. Uh, three months after the cornea is clear, there is more astigmatism. Uh, there is about six diopters at 153. And about one year post-op, and after I did the uh, uh, selective suture removal, uh, the astigmatism is significantly removed from uh, six diopters to about 1.3 diopters at 170. And uh, just with glasses, this patient sees really well. Uh, you can see that uh, the refraction is really minimal, um, and the cylindrical part is uh, 1.5 diopters only. This is a case that I got from Dr. Ravi Patel from uh, Atlantic Eye. This is a patient that had bilateral PKs uh, in the left eye. This patient had uh, 11 diopters of regular astigmatism, regular oblique astigmatism at 61 uh, degrees. And uh, in this case, uh, Dr. Patel did uh, astigmatic keratotomies. 
This is how the patient looks um, a few months after. There's a markedly reduced amount of uh, topographic astigmatism uh, reduced to three diopters from 11 diopters. And you can see here on the on uh, the um, slit lamp image that uh, you can barely even see the, uh, the scars from the AKs. Uh, this is another patient with uh, advanced keratoconus and also a, a significant amount of uh, cataract. Uh, in this case, uh, because the Ks were so high, I uh, decided to go for a staged approach and I started off by doing uh, dulk. So I'm doing here uh, a very um, archeological and uh, lamellar dulk where I'm going uh, lamella by lamella and uh, trying to remove as much of the cornea as uh, I can. And you can tell that uh, by the time I'm done, the, the cornea is pretty clear. So I think that we really did thin it out. And this is how it's looking uh, after we put the corneal cap on top. And uh, after uh, all the sutures are removed, there's still some astigmatism in this cornea, about 2.6 diopters. It looks pretty regular. And as I said, this patient still has a visually significant cataract. And uh, in this case, I offered the patient to have um, um, cataract surgery with a toric lens. You can see that using this uh, calculator, had we used a toric lens uh, on SA6 AT6, that patient would have uh, had a minimal amount of astigmatism, about 0.1 diopters with flipping of the axis. This is another case. This is a 70-year-old patient uh, that had uh, PKs done for keratoconus um, 40 years ago. Uh, never had really any improvement in uh, vision after the surgery. You can see here that uh, the graft is uh, decentered. Uh, there is a lot of scarring inferiorly, and uh, I'll just try to put the laser pointer on. This area here is very, very thin. So all of this scarred area is extremely thin almost all the way down to the limbus. Uh, this patient also have, has a very significant uh, cataract. And um, this patient, as you can see here, there's a 19.3 diopters of, uh, of astigmatism. Uh, the thickness of the graft over the pupil is about 600 microns. So I didn't think that the graft was um, failed. Uh, and uh, when I started talking to the patient, it, it became very, um, uh, very evident that uh, this patient did not want something big. I offered her initially to, to have just cataract surgery and see how that goes, but look at the numbers. So the axial length is uh, 30 millimeters, so about four millimeters away from her uh, fellow eye. And the Ks are just all over the place. And uh, there's about 27, 28 diopters of astigmatism over the cornea. Uh, even uh, uh, the only lens that would bring this patient to amitropia was uh, a minus 24 uh, lens. We just don't have these lenses. So I came up with this case report uh, that was published in Cornea in uh, 2022, Cornea Application for Ectatic PK Graft. Uh, and uh, in this technique, the uh, authors describe how they took uh, an ectatic graft and plicated it on top of the uh, thin area. Vision improved from count fingers to 2032. So a significant improvement in, uh, in vision and reduction in astigmatism. So we try to do the same approach here. So here's the video, We're starting off with marking the area of the plication, that very thin area, removing the epithelium and using the diamond burr to roughen the stroma. Again, remarking the area and starting to pass off sutures to approximate those uh, two areas. You can tell that the eye is soft, I'm pressing on it, but it's still very hard to bring the, these uh, two areas together with the first suture. But uh, as we uh, go along and place more sutures, um, it's uh, becoming much easier to really bring those two ridges together and to um, plicate that very thin area. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm going to continue. And this is how this patient looks at uh, post-op day one after surgery. So the graft did not fail. You can see the plicated area on the inter interior segment OCT. Uh, and uh, there's a marked reduction in astigmatism from 19 diopters to about five diopters, much more regular 
over time, there were changes in the astigmatism, and uh, I started removing uh, the sutures uh, selectively. Um, the plicated area still remains intact, and on the last visit, this patient has uh, 2,400 uncorrected visions, so much better. Graft is not failed, and the astigmatism is reduced to about seven diopters. Uh, as uh, so, just to finalize. Um, so, uh, post keratoplastic astigmatism is a common problem after PK, and uh, uh, the treatment definitely has to go first of all through hard lenses. Uh, and uh, if that fails, there are many other surgical methods to address astigmatism. Thank you very much. This is my email. If anyone has any questions, and um, with that in mind, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Excellent. Excellent.